Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby and have ourselves a drink. All right, and we are back in the lobby bar for the week of December the 4th, 2023. Brian and Michaela here with you as always. And Michaela, we have made it into December. Uh, it is time for our annual uh, Christmas movie uh, extravaganza here on Drink the Movies. We actually started Drink the Movies back in December time, started with some Christmas movies and excited to get back into those. Uh, lucky that we have uh, movies back so we can uh, talk about a few of those. But how are you doing, Michaela? Are you are you ready for December? Are you are you uh decorations all up or your presents all bought how is your uh, start to the month going oh um decorations are up decorations are up um i am feeling very much like a christmas elf um although unlike in the movie elf where he uh buddy the elf turns um, basically macy's into a winter wonderland in like four hours it took me a week and a half to get my tree up and all i think, of it's, I think the- it's gimbals but Gimbals, okay. whatever. It's basically Macy's. <laughs> it is the Macy's, actually. Fun fact, uh, episode two of Drink the Movies is talking about Elf with the world's greatest cup of coffee. Um, I highly recommend that one. It's almost as long as the movie itself. Um, haters going to hate, but we didn't know what we were doing. Um, but yes, so I have uh, almost completely succeeded in my winter wonderland extravaganza that is both internal and external to my house. Um, okay. I, I just have a few things to do, but yeah, the present buying haven't even, nope, that's not a, that's that it's on the horizon, my friend on the horizon. <laughs> what about you? That's, that's an 11th hour activity for sure. Yeah. We're, uh, we're coming along here pretty good. I got the decorations are, are mostly up, you know, we're kind of picking and choosing what we put up this year. And then, you know, at the end of the Christmas season, you end up with more stuff than you put out. Uh, it happens every year. It's probably going to happen, uh, this year for sure. Uh, gift buying has, uh, started a little bit. Uh, we got our eggnog made. So basically all of our, our Christmas checklist is coming through pretty good, pretty good. But you know what we need, Michaela, before we, you know, get through that checklist. One of the most important things on the checklist is getting a cocktail going here this week in the lobby bar. Uh, and I found this one today on uh, yummly.com. And I was like, this sounds pretty good because this is an often overlooked uh, Christmas time ingredient, winter ingredient. Uh, here in the US, at least, uh, you go out to the store now and you start seeing come winter time, those little bags of like the cuties, the little the little uh, tangerines mm. and little clementines. That is uh, pretty good. And this is going to be the clementine winter cocktail. Uh, so check this out, Michaela. So basically what you're going to do into a shaker tin with some ice, go ahead and put two ounces of vodka, a third of a cup of uh, freshly squeezed clementine juice, a uh, half an ounce of lemon juice, and one ounce of rosemary simple syrup. Now, uh, to make that, just make a regular simple syrup, throw a sprig or two of rosemary in, let it sit for a while, good to go. Um, if you don't want to mess around with making that or you don't think you're going to use rosemary simple syrup, uh, even though you probably will because it's delicious, go ahead and just throw a sprig of rosemary into your shaker tin. It's going to uh, bruise it up and get a little bit of that essence in there. Shake that with some ice and then strain it into a glass with ice but before you do that you want to take that glass and you're going to rim it with some lemon and sugar uh mixture there just go ahead and a little bit of uh, lemon juice and then just uh, get that sugar and lemon zest on there pour in your drink sip and enjoy it's going to be a much brighter uh holiday cocktail you know normally you think of like things like eggnog and like chocolate martinis and uh hot toddies and stuff like that this winter this is going to be light and fresh and refreshing uh but very wintry yeah Oh, I'm so excited Um, because I have some clementines. So this this could be a really fun brunch uh, cocktail. I'm very excited about that. And if um, if you have extra clementines, there's really a fun Christmassy kind of, well, wintry activity that you take some cloves and you like push Mm, each mm -hmm, of the cloves mm -hmm. into the little clementines. And so you get these like clovey orangey balls and you can put them in various places throughout your house um for like a couple of days and they make the they, they make the place smell very christmasy and holiday and it's quite lovely um Excellent. so we buy clementines every year for that because it's a really fun activity now i can make a cocktail that's even better that's <laughs> <laughs> yep. yeah there you go i uh i think we uh, might have done something similar to that when we made our uh 
our uh, rum punch for It's yes. a Wonderful Life. We did that. You take those uh, those little clementines or oranges with the cloves and uh, bake them off. That sounds uh, pretty good. It makes the house smell amazing. Uh, and some people to even take like clementines and get them in their stocking. I think that's like a family tradition for a lot of people. I never uh, myself got a clementine in my stocking, but I think it's like a like a good fortune kind of thing. So grab yourself a bag of clementines and uh, take a couple aside and mix up this cocktail. That's going to be pretty good. Uh, you know what else is pretty good, Michaela? We're recording this a day early, so we've only got the Friday box office, but what is pretty good? It's Beyonce. Beyonce is pretty good. She took uh, Friday night with $11 million. Uh, you and I went and saw Napoleon on Thursday, and we came out of the lobby uh, right about the time people are showing up for the 7 o'clock showing, and it was like it was like a Beyonce concert in there, for it, sure. It was. It was. Uh, we were we were leaving uh, wishing that we had gone to the Beyonce concert extravagant. You and your beautiful wife are going uh, tonight, I think. So you'll have to tell me all mm -hmm, the things. Mm -hmm. Tell me all about it. Um, I'm sorry I'm going to miss it. Uh, but I think um, this is supposed to be like, well, we saw Taylor Swift's uh, concert uh, on mm -hmm, on mm -hmm. the big screen. And this is supposed to blow that completely away. So I, I don't know if that's true or not. If, if you have an opinion and if you've seen it, Drink the Movies fans, let us know. Drink the Music fans, let us know. Um, but I, I would be interested to see kind of how they compare because uh, Beyonce is just, she's this anthem, anthem epic. I mean, they're both pretty epic now, but I mean, whew, I don't know. I, I feel like when we were at the Taylor Swift concert, there was a lot of like, tweens and moms like going there there were multi-generational girls uh mm. like families be being there um but when when we walked out and saw the lobby full of people going to this beyonce concert it was like entering into a different dimension i don't know <laughs> there were so many people and they were dressed up in a in they were so excited and it was all sorts of just I don't know it was a kaleidoscope of like different walks of life walking in and it was so neat um to see so I I really hope that it's that it's everything that it's supposed to have everybody has built up to be um and it seems to have done pretty well in the box office yeah $11 million. so that's pretty good exciting. it's gonna yeah it's gonna be a little different than the uh, Taylor Swift uh, eras that was more of just a uh, concert uh film this is more of a documentary I think kind of about the Renaissance uh concert mm -hmm. that uh that she put on um which I actually got uh, the had the chance to go to um here over the summer so I'm interested to to see that for sure um I did see online that uh Taylor Swift went to the premiere there for Beyonce as Beyonce went to the premiere for uh Taylor's uh concerts uh, tour so maybe maybe movies are out uh just uh just music things are in now uh, at the theater. So we got that. Uh, Godzilla Minus One uh, came in second on Friday with $4.7 million. I've heard pretty good things about that. If you're a Godzilla fan, uh, might want to go check that out. Had a bit of a movie. It's, it's not really news, but kind of a, a movie announcement thing. Saw this week. Wanted to just make mention of that. If you've not seen it, Macaulay Culkin got himself a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. So congratulations to Macaulay Culkin. But the best part of this news story is that Catherine O'Hara was there uh, to wish him well. They kind of uh, got that picture they put it side by side on like uh, E, I think, uh, Entertainment uh, did on their uh, Twitter or Instagram or something like that of, of them together kind of, you know, mirroring the picture from Home Alone, which we talked about in episode 106. But Macaulay Culkin, Walk of Fame, that's pretty good, uh, Michaela. He's had a bit of a career resurgence this past couple of years. He has. And um, I have to say, um, he was in Party Monster, gosh, now, now it's probably like 20 years ago. And that, that, to me really was um emblematic of like his prowess as an actor i mean everybody loves macaulay culkin in you know uh uncle buck and the home alone films and where you know even like in the good son right he mm -hmm, he's mm -hmm. this child actor he had to really go through some stuff to break free of that stigma i think child actors really have um a, a a long road to climb to kind of get out and break free of that box he's amazing in so many things and then lately um it, it's been even even more prolific he he's just a really really cool guy and um i love seeing that his you know sc on screen mom um Catherine O'Hara was there to pre present the award and there's this really great picture of them that mirrors kind of what it looked like in uh, Home Alone when she comes home and it's really beautiful and of course I cried um, and it's just really awesome um, to see uh, an actor that we have beloved and and showered with affection for the last I don't know now 30 years um, 
oh my god 30 years we're so old um but it's so nice to <laughs> see that he that he got a star on the walk of fame and that now like his name's i mean he was never going to be forgotten anyway but now it's like you know in 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 the golden road of hollywood that's right. Absolutely. Yeah, we talked a little bit about it back in episode uh, 106. But you know, quite the quite the weight there on an on an actor. I think Macaulay Culkin was 10 years old when he literally became, you know, the face of one of the top grossing films of all time, you know, at the time when Home Alone came out. And yeah, as I mentioned, a bit of a career resurgence here. He was in a season of American Horror Story back in 2021, uh, which I thought he was excellent in. Um, I don't remember the the particular name of that that one but it was the one that came out in 2021 that was excellent he was just in a couple of episodes of the righteous gemstones just this past year so yeah congratulations to macaulay culkin uh what do we got coming out this week michaela we've got the 4k special edition of the abyss uh looking forward to that uh, it's been a long time since i've seen the abyss so uh looking forward to seeing what's uh james cameron uh cooked up here i'm guessing mm. that that 4k uh cut of this is going to just look absolutely glorious i would imagine yeah i mean it Man, that film, it it was so amazing. And um it it actually we should we should definitely cover it on Drink the Movies because it was groundbreaking mm. in all of the use of the water technology. And um, and if you don't know anything about it, it's like this water that's alive, it's it's really cool. Um, but I don't know about you, Brian. <clears throat> I have a fear of big waves. And um, I have mm. this recurring dream of a giant wave that is coming at me that's so big and so tall that I can't even see the top of it. And um, I don't know how, but James Cameron uh, must have been connected to my brain in the ether because at the end of that film, there's a giant wave. And mm. so the last 20 minutes of that movie, I go into like heart palpitations. I freak out. It's not good, but it's so good. The movie itself is amazing. Um, and uh, yeah, we should definitely cover it. So I'm so glad that they're, that, that, he has a new um, he has not a new take on it, but that he's that we're releasing it because um, I think with 4K and ultra digital with the big screen, mm -hmm. um, it's going to be really epic. Well, I think The Abyss came out when we were like eight years old. So maybe James Cameron yeah. is to blame for your fear of big waves. I don't know uh, oh, about that for sure. Oh, my gosh. Um, but uh so so the abyss it's it's been hard to come by and that's probably why we've not covered it or talked more about uh about the film just you and i because uh you were unable to get it on uh any sort of streaming thing it was hard to find like dvd copies of it because it's it's a bit out of the out of the universe basically uh but i guess this 4k version is coming out so maybe we'll have to have to check into that a couple other things here poor things is coming out if you're interested in uh getting ready to go on your Oscar watch that has uh, Emma Stone and Mark Ruffalo, Willem Dafoe, and that one, that one looks pretty good and interesting. And then we've got animated film here, The Boy and the Heron. I'm seeing that on a lot of short lists for animated films. That's a uh, Hayao Miyazaki uh, film there who did, uh, you know, Spirited Away and My Neighbor Totoro and Princess Mononoke. So that's going to be excellent. I assume that's coming mm -hmm. out this week. So looking forward uh, to checking that out. Uh, either of those uh, caught your eye, Michaela. We've seen the uh, preview for Poor Things a couple of times so yeah i mean emma stone anything she touches i have to go see um she's just amazing it looks visually stunning um i i have i still don't quite understand what it's about and i don't i want to for most of the movies that i think are going to be up for best picture i try to not um read any synopsis mm -hmm, because i mm -hmm. want it to hit me and that's kind of how i want i love to experience those types of films so forgive me if I don't know uh, what it's about at all, really. But I've seen the mm -hmm, previews mm -hmm. a couple times and it looks amazing. Um, the Boy and the Heron, look, listen, people of all, I am really going to struggle with the best animated feature this year because there are so many good ones that have come out. So many that were like super popular, like Spider-Man. Um, I mean, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, there were so many that like were super mainstream, but also really well done. And mm -hmm. then you have the this that's going to be like Spirited Away was or Princess Mononoke that like really captures your imagination in a different way and makes you think about things and is not really um, not that it's not for kids, but just much more thematically adult and thinking about uh, and complicated thoughts rather than. Uh, mm -hmm, sure. I don't know, some of these simplistic good versus evil kind of things. Anyway, I don't know what we're going to do, Brian, because this <laughs> is going to be amazing. And it's I feel like it's going to take um, all like the critiques, the the critics by storm. And it's it's going to be really well written up. Um, how 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 could it not? But oh, 
I, I'm not looking forward to to the, <laughs> the day we do our Oscar pickums for animated film. I'll tell you that right now. We'll take a uh, free pass on animated films uh, and not hold ourselves to those. Yeah, for sure. And you mentioned uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem. That's what we talked about last week uh, here on the podcast, Michaela. So go back and give that a listen. Uh, you know, we saw that over the over the summer, but due to the strike, it just came out last week. So really fun conversation about that. And then we did a Patreon bonus episode about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Turtles 2, Secret of the Ooze. You know, those classic uh, comic book adaptations there from... Uh, uh, the Ninja Turtle world over on our Patreon. It's patreon.com slash drink the movies. So definitely go check those out. And as I mentioned at the top, Michaela, Christmas time is here again. Uh, we're getting back into the Christmas movie spirit with our first uh, holiday film this week, Love Actually. Uh, this is one you and I have talked about through basically the entirety of our friendship. And this week we recorded it and are going to release it to the world. We'll see how everyone feels about how we rank these uh, these relationships, these friendships, these, these loves, these love loss all the all the things love all actually things. so so that's coming this week so definitely make sure you're subscribed and uh ready to go for that one we're getting into our holiday movies so uh let us know at home if you make up one of these uh clementine cocktails or what you do with clementines this time of year if that's your jam let us know uh what holiday films you're getting into watching because it is that time of year so thank you so much for tuning in and we'll talk to you next week in the lobby bar <laughs>